All right. So hello, everyone. I'm Francis Jimenez from PLR Insiders, and I'm here with my good friend Aurelius Jin, the founder of Unstoppable Profits and now Convey Agency. So tell us about yourself more and when was the first time you encountered PLR products, Aurelius? Uh, yeah. Firstly, thanks for having me. Uh, well, first, uh, how I got into PLR. Uh, if we backtrack to my story, really, I started online by um, sort of selling unwanted goods on eBay. And um, I searched for, literally, I searched for make money online on Google. And that's, that, that gave me so many ways to sort of make money online, considering this was back in 2004. But the first thing I did to make money online was to sell on eBay. And then when I was on eBay, I stumbled upon uh, sellers who were who were actually selling ebooks uh, at that time when it was actually allowed and legitimate. Um, you know they were selling ebooks and they had rights to resell it. And then I saw I saw one particular seller who sold a package with resale rights products, and I was wondering what that was. And uh, basically, you're you're given the rights to also on sell resell it to your and subscribers, and that's what I did. I bought a package of some something like a hundred ebooks, and then I sold each one individually on uh, eBay, and uh, for something like ninety nine US uh, cents. And that's you know I was making two hundred bucks a month, you know a couple of hundred here and there from doing that alone. And you know while I was still studying and uh, working my uh, six day um, job. And that's how I was sort of introduced or stumbled upon uh, private label rights. And from there, I guess you can uh, I'd say, you know, I started to um, learn the process of how to create an ebook. And that's how I started building uh, and my, my PLR business, unstoppablepl.com. All right, awesome. So, having said that, what made you interested in creating the PLR products and what made you make your, uh, because you said you resold first, I wanted to understand when did you start creating and, you know, promoting these things? Uh, what, what got you into like, oh, I think I can create my own and sell this? Uh, well, I um, basically thought, you know, to, to be able to sell PLR products, you, you actually need to write the eBooks. But in actual fact, uh, you, you hire writers who are, uh, industry experts in that or they're good at writing they're good at researching and writing and so I found a couple of writers I think back then um, it was Odesk or something one of the freelance sites and uh, hired my first writer to write an ebook around internet marketing and that's how I started selling uh, PLR and uh, had sort of affiliates and JVs I connected with people like Edmund at that time uh, we actually launched a, a site together before and uh, it's all about building relationships with others, others in the industry and uh, reciprocating the way so that you're helping each other and making sales, ultimately building each other's businesses. Awesome. So what PLR products do you actually specialize on and why did you choose yep. these types of products? Uh, well, the main categories, I guess, uh, you can say it's online, online business, uh, social media, and self-improvement slash personal development. Uh, topics like uh, meditation, yoga, uh, diets, whatever's in, basically. And the, that's the important part, I think, uh, researching, making sure I get the topics right. Uh, for example, I launched a uh, PLR uh, on Bitcoin in December of 2017. And during that time, I think Bitcoin was, uh, I don't, how much was it? Something over $10,000 yeah. or something with the, the rate. Uh, but during that time, that was kind of the hype. And you kind of, you have to leverage off of that and what's trending, what's hot, what people are talking about. And when you know what they're talking about, and you, then you go out, and you create products around that, uh, you know, not, not just for PLR, but it could be anything. It could be a course that you want to probably release. And so I did that, and that was the best-selling 
PLR product that I sold uh, in you know the uh, eight to ten years that I've been uh, pr producing PLR products, and so you know self help. Uh, internet marketing, social media, those are the main topics I, I specialize in, only because I know that my customers uh, demand those topics. And I've tried other types of products, like very small and niche products, but it's never done well. So I tend to stick to uh, topics that are more, that appeals more to the general sort of um, public. And, uh, you know, if I'm talking about social media, I, it's, I usually release a topic called, you know, one example is social media authority. And that sort of appeals to anyone who wants to sell a product around social media because they can repurpose that into so many ways because their niche could be people over 50 or 60, you know, the senior sort of niche. And so they can use that product to then um, sort of uh, shape it in a way so that it's tailored towards that. Whereas, you know, on the ha other hand, if I created a product specifically for a certain demographic, let's say social media for young entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that only appeals to that type of audience. And so that other group of, you know, people who want to sell to their uh, senior audience or somewhat, mm -hmm. you know, they, it's going to be a lot harder to then customize a PLR product uh, mm -hmm. for that type of demographic. Yeah. So, can because you said that uh, you, you try to look for trends or something that's coming up, even on general topics. Yep. Can you give us an example on how you research or how you yeah. find these yeah. topics? Uh, can you give us some examples? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I think part of, because I've systemized and sort of streamlined my PLR business in a way effectively where I don't need to be there and create the products. Mm. Uh, however, the main job that I do and that uh, if you look at it as in the 80-20 the principle, my 20% that I put in, that results to the 80% of the re results, the 20% that I put in, the, that, that is my job, is to make sure I research the topic and the process that I follow. Usually it's by going to sites, uh, big sites like Amazon. Uh, you look through the Amazon books and then from there you can see on the left uh, navigation, this is if you're looking on your desktop computer, you'll see the categories and the subjects that are currently either uh, bestsellers or, uh, you know, trending. And you can specifically choose which type of subject you want. So if you go to business and uh, money, then under that there's marketing and then under marketing, there's social media, leadership, all those types of things. And then you can sort of, niche down as much as you want, uh, as long as it's provided there, and then check out what the best sellers are in those categories. And then what I do is I check what's the top 10 in that particular niche. I take notes, uh, you know, get some ideas, brainstorm, which is uh, really important. And then sort of uh, look at it as in, you know, what's relevant today. So, you know, looking at the Bitcoin uh, example again that was relevant in that that time of the uh, that, that year in December mm. you know, now it's sort of died down a bit mm. and so I wouldn't release anything around Bitcoin maybe cryptocurrency but not so much uh, Bitcoin but um, you know um, I've already done it so uh, there's no point releasing on the Bitcoin product but that's the sort of process that I follow to find hot topics I also find Topics uh, from buzzsumo.com um, that gives you some ideas. If you put in the keyword, it can show you how many, uh, you know, the top blog posts or publications, uh, you know, around those keywords that you put in. And then it tells you, uh, you know, how many people shared it, how many people liked it based on social media engagement. And that's sort of what I, an indication as well that I look, look at. Uh, also, what you can do is if you have an existing subscriber base or customer base, you can ask them what topics they'd like to see. Uh, there's no harm in that because, you know, you're not only are you building a relationship with your customers, you're listening to them, but you're also getting uh, valuable uh, feedback and ideas that you can pick up and use to produce your own PLR products or courses or whatnot. And 
that's another way that I've used in the past. Uh, not so much now because my process really is just looking uh, to Amazon. That's probably the number one way that, uh, you know, the method that I use. All right. Awesome. Awesome process. I think that's a fantastic way to do things and find good topics for PLR. So, have you, you know, the next thing is, what are the main benefits you think of PLR? Uh, because, you know, there's so many things that people talk mm -hmm. about, say about PLR. So, what do you think are the main benefits for business owners, especially the ones who want to use it or sell it? What do you think are the main benefits for them? Well, main benefits, I see really uh, it's going to save you a lot of time because creating writing courses, you know, writing ebooks does take time. And for a person who doesn't know how to write and who, you know, is freezes when they just think about writing, you know, PLR will help them uh, to sort of shortcut uh, the, the product creation process and so that they can uh, spend more time or invest more of their time into things that they actually uh, enjoy doing um, and things that actually grow the business because if you're sitting in front of a computer writing 10,000 words or 20,000 words an ebook then that is not you know going to be the most effective use of your time and the other benefit is it's going to save you money you could go and outsource a 10,000 word ebook, but it will cost you somewhere around, you know, 500 to $800, even more, depending on how good the writer is, you know, per ebook. And so that is costly if you're just starting out, especially. And so if you want to leverage and really uh, get something out there to sell, then PLR products is uh, the solution. And there's so many users of it. Um, and those are the two main benefits. I've got customers who, you know, are quite well known in the sort of online marketing space and even the entrepreneurship space. I've got, you know, I won't disclose who, but uh, quite big brands, uh, yeah. personal brands, and they purchased my PLR products. And I'm so, I was a little surprised, but, you know, I was flattered at the same time uh, mm -hmm. that they are using my products. I, I'm not sure exactly how they're using it, Perhaps, you know, they're extracting some of the content. Mm. Um, perhaps they're just selling it as is and just redesigning the, the ebook cover. So, mm. you know, there's so many benefits um, depending on your type of business and your strategy and the outcome, outcome that you want uh, in your business. Awesome. So, uh, because you talked about all the benefits, with all your years of experience, what do you think are the most common misconceptions about PLR products these days? I think uh, a couple of the misconceptions. Uh, the first is um, that all PLR is created equal and people think that uh, because you buy PLR, the, the, if you're not happy with the quality from one provider, then that means in general, the whole uh, arena of uh, PLR sellers, the quality is going to be the same or on par. Uh, but that's not the case, uh, depending really who uh, supplies it, who, you know, how seriously they take the business. Uh, you know, I make sure that personally in my, in my own business, that my writers are uh, qualified, you know, that they do the job. And they make sure they proofread their work, make sure the quality is, you know, this, the, uh, that's something I would use myself. Mm. And so that's why I, I, I guess that's one of the factors the reason why I have a lot of customers who keep buying year after, you know, year after year, and they've been with me for, since the start. Uh, some of them have told me, you know, I've been following you and we keep buying your products, da, da, da. And because of, because of the quality, that's one factor. And so not all PLI is credit equal. And that um, a lot of people who do buy PLI, they also think that, they have to sell it as is, as in they can't edit the product. But when you grab the PLR rights uh, or private label rights, that is, you're actually given the rights to edit the content um, really. But the thing is different PLR sellers have different rights or different meaning of having PLR. For me, when I sell the rights to uh, private label rights, 
they can basically customize the product as they wish. Uh, the only thing they can't do is use my name as the author or seller of the product. They have to use theirs or yeah. be anonymous and put, use a pen name or an alias. Mm. Um, just a couple of restrictions, really. Um, I don't put a restriction on, you know, the minimum price because I think that's uh, uh, illegal in terms of the F FTC rules and things like that. Um, but those are the f couple of misconceptions, really. They, they, a lot of people think that they can't edit it or customize it. When in fact, yeah, you can do anything you want. You can actually, actually translate it into another language of your choosing. So if you're from France and you want to, serve the the french market then yeah you can take the ebook translate it as you wish if you want to do that or hire someone to translate it so that's the flexibility and another benefit i guess of having the private label ads yeah. cool so since you have a, th a few thousand customers i believe for pl products what do you think are the common mistakes people usually make when they buy or use plr products for themselves i wouldn't say uh this some they're not mistakes, but I think these are sort of best practices mm -hmm. when you're getting PLR. When, you, when you're buying PLR, one of the things that I see a lot of people do is to um, sell it as is without really making any, even minor changes to it, like putting your author name or adding your, your voice or your, your sort of taste to it, a bit of personality. I mean, that, that does um, sort of make the product a bit more unique. Uh, but if you're selling it as is, then you can't expect to, uh, people to sort of, you know, you might, there's a, there's a high chance that other people will sell the same product. And so one of the things is to, to get ahead and dif differentiate yourself is to customize a product uh, so that it fits your business. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing you can do is get the, the graphics or ebook cover redesigned uh, uh, you know, but it kind of defeats the purpose, you know, that's on, on the other hand, it defeats the purpose of grabbing private label rights because the whole point is to have a ready-made product that you can sell and save time. Uh, but I'm just saying that if you want to take it a step further, um, the best thing you can do is customize it. Yeah. So can you give us a personal example of a mistake you made in the in your PLR business, I mean, anything from before and what you've done to change it. Can you give us a personal example? Uh, anything personally that I've changed? Uh, well, design is one thing. Uh, the content, you know, I've I've extracted some content. I've added content to the the eBooks that uh, that I get and. Uh, you know, just, it's all about customizing, I think in the end, so that you're, you're standing out against your competitors or whatnot, but uh, it shouldn't be, business shouldn't be looked at that and as if you're competing against one another. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise you're, you're just like a commodity, you know, you're just competing on price or value, things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's one of the things you can do. Yeah. Since you said that you can edit edit uh, an ebook or do whatever you want with it, what do you think are the main tools people need to use to make PLR effective for them or useful for mm -hmm. them? Uh, the types of tools that uh, you can use to customize, uh, they're, they're actually essential if you, if you do want to customize a PLR product or ebook for that matter, is something like uh, Word, or if you don't have Word, um, you can use Google Docs to edit the ebook and things like that. That's, if you want to uh, customize the graphics, then you can either uh, hire someone from uh, fiverr.com or from uh, you know, upwork.com, find a designer, ask them if they can you know, just rebrand it, redesign it, and create a new title you know, let's say the product that you got is called social media authority. You could call it something else uh, so that it's sort of, you know, it, it makes it different to those who are also selling the same thing. Uh, so you can also use Photoshop if you're a bit more technically savvy mm -hmm. and you know how to use Photoshop and the basics uh, for uh, my customers usually get a, 
a two hour training course on how to customize a PLR product after they purchase. And so it's a lot of them have gone through that. Uh, they still struggle with the technical aspects of it because yeah, it is a little technical um, to customize and uh, in no way, in no way that, uh, you know, when I sell a product, I say that uh, I do, I do say that it's done for you as in the product is created, but it's not, uh, I'm not saying that you can, uh, you know, that it's all hands-free at the end of the day, you still need to sell the product. You still need to put it up on your website, you need to upload it. You need to integrate a shopping cart to it. And that's one of the other tools. Um, if you want to start selling it on a platform, you can use JV Zoo or something like Thrivecart or uh, JV Share. There's quite a few, but uh, my recommendation is just keep it simple. Use something like JV Zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, easy to create funnels, sales funnels, things like that. If you do want to go that route and you can manage the product there, put in the download links, integrate your autoresponder, which is another tool. Mm -hmm. And those are the main tools that uh, you can use to start selling. Um, PayPal, of course, you've got to accept money. And yeah, that's, those are the tools that I would use if uh, I were to customize and sell the product. Awesome. Can you give us some creative examples that you've seen, uh, people use your PLR or even some of your examples that you've used on your own away from the creation, uh, creating the PLR type of products. Can you give us an example on how you've used it or, you, or you've seen them use it? Yeah. So if we look at it in terms of the business to consumer, like I'm selling to my customers and how they have used it. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of them uh, create or add some of the content from the ebook that they they purchased from me, um, they added it to their own course. So it adds a bit more value or as extra bonus content. That's one way. Uh, a couple of other ways I've seen um, people who've used it, they've created a kind of like an ebook store mm -hmm. so or an ebook membership. So pe members or customers, they pay, let's say $10, $20 a month for access to um, regular uh, ebooks that they get access to inside the members area and people pay that recurring amount and they basically the actual website owner purchases the products from me i release two to three uh, ebook plrs a month so that gives them great content to add um, inside the members area that's another way and another way i've seen other people use it and uh, a couple of my coaching students they've um, used it to create their own five to seven day e-course or email course. Um, um, because some of my, uh, actually a lot of my products uh, already include a, um, a seven day sort of email autoresponder sequence. So then they use that to um, preload it into their autoresponder mm -hmm. to give regular content to people who subscribe to the email list. And it's another way to, as an incentive for people to join your email list. Uh, I've seen people extract some of the content from the ebook and also post it to their blog mm -hmm. um, for, you know, just to keep the engagement with their customers or subscribers or readers or um, prospects. Um, because again, it comes down to whether you can, you you like writing or you don't have the time to write. And so that's where uh, PLR um, helps. Uh, you simply grab one of the chapters from the ebook, post it on your blog, and you've got ready-made content. Mm -hmm. Now, the one of the questions I get uh, when I tell people this is that doesn't that um, you know isn't that a red flag? Doesn't that um, isn't that considered duplicate content in the mm -hmm. eyes of Google? And yeah, it is if you're basically copying and pasting and, mm. and if there are other people who are doing the exact same thing. And so I wouldn't try to use PLR to get uh, or to, to get SEO benefits out of it, mm. as in getting traffic from search engines. So mm. it, should, it shouldn't be used as that. And um, you can if you customize somewhere around 90% of the content mm -hmm. and that, you know, rewording it, perhaps you can get a writer to just reword it. Mm -hmm. um, and that will make it um, unique. 
and give it a new title, uh, like a new blog post title. And uh, from there, you know, that's, that's the way to go around it. If you want to go that route of using the content to, uh, on your blog, um, I'll give you a couple of other examples. I've seen other people um, repurpose the content into video right? and they post it on YouTube. So they create some sort of presentation or like a, a slide slide deck, right? Um, out of the content. So it's little snippets of, you know, each slide and create it into a video form, um, posting it up with a keyword rich um, title. Mm -hmm. um, and with some tags, of course, and those videos will, um, you know, end up uh, as a re some results if you if people search for it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the aim anyway, and mm -hmm. so that's another way of um, repurposing the content. Um, another way is to reuse it on social media, right? You grab mm -hmm. snippets out of it, yeah. post it on Twitter, um, use it on Facebook or you know, your Facebook group. So those are some uh, creative ways, I guess. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Aurelius, you've been a wonderful interviewee and uh, you have so many ideas that I know our readers or our listeners would actually learn from. So I have one closing question for you because I know I've known you from way back. Uh, how valuable you think uh, have been PLR products or the PLR business to you uh, in general, as a person, how, how, how do you think your business changed or your life changed because of PLR products? Well, uh, you know, looking at my history, I guess I've always been selling uh, PLR products. And as uh, men mentioned in my story uh, in, this, in this interview, uh, you know, I talked about selling it on eBay. And so it, that was like 12 years ago. And now it's grown to... Uh, build up to like a PLR empire, I guess, like creating over 200 uh, products. Uh, but it's, it's helped tremendously and it's added value to a, a lot of my subscribers, um, saving their time, uh, saving them time and uh, money, you know, and I, I personally also still use PLI in my own business. You know, I, another way, <laughs> you know, just to sort of close it is I use PLR also as uh, bonus incentives when people purchase through my affiliate link. Mm. Um, so if people purchase through my affiliate link, then yeah, they grab maybe three, five, even 10 PLR products as bonuses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just another way to, to add value to your subscribers. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Aurelius. This is a wonderful interview. Uh, and I hope to talk to you again. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Awesome. Thank you.